Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. This is an update on Comet Leonard. I've been watching Comet Leonard through the Eon 130mm telescope and some spectacular images coming in this morning, December 3rd. Yeah, the comet near M3, Messier 3, the globular cluster. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. The comet seemed a little bit brighter this morning, about a magnitude 6 now. You know, a week ago it was 8.5, so it is getting brighter. However, I don't think it will become a naked eye comet, as it's just, I don't think it's going to get bright enough. It might, but it will be very dim in the uh, morning skies, and then eventually after December uh, 12th, it will start reappearing in the evening sky below the planet Venus. Uh, keep an eye on it for that. But for right now, what I was more interested in was to get the comet as it was passing by Messier 3. That's a huge globular cluster consisting of about 500,000 stars. And that uh, cluster is about, what, uh, 13,000 light years away? Uh, but the uh, comet was passing in front of it this morning and uh, well, the first thing I wanted to do is make sure I was able to capture it because this, this is at 5 o'clock in the morning when it comes into view at my location. Now, the telescope, uh, the Eon 130mm uh, uh, F7 scope, was looking off to the east and just a little bit north of due east. And there I have an opening in the sky. There you can see it right there. <laughs> it just turned out to be perfect. That's where the comet is in that little opening uh, just to the uh, left of the trees there and to the right of the house. Anyway, I wanted to make sure I captured the comet using the NINA program. That's nighttime imaging in astronomy. And I went into the advanced sequencer for the first time. I finally broke the ice. I saw Joe Navarro uh, using the advanced sequencer on his last video. And I said, you know, I need to get in there and get my feet wet. So I practiced all night long uh, before the morning hours to make sure everything was working right. And I had it all set up and ready to go. And I was having the uh, Nina count down to the start of the imaging, which was going to be about 5 o'clock in the morning. Now what I was going to do, and what I did do, is to have uh, two minute sub exposures and I was going to take them until dawn so I didn't have to set a, a, a number I just said to Nina keep taking images until dawn and that's what it did and uh, I was able to get about 36 images so out of that I got about a little bit more than an hour's worth of good data to work with now stacking a comet is always very uh, interesting and somewhat difficult but in deep sky stacker it is a little bit easier, however, setting it up is a little tedious uh, work, and I did that and got the uh, comet all set up, and then uh, had to go through a, a Pixon site to help um, move out the streaks of stars uh, from the blending of the comet and the motion of the uh, background uh, stars, and I used StarNet to help uh, alleviate a lot of the star trails. And then from there, I went into Photoshop and you know, look at this photo from Photoshop. You can actually see how the comet was moving. This was all the images with the uh, uh, deep sky stacker uh, focus on the stars in M3, and the comet was moving. There you can see how the comet was moving. Now, from there, I was able to uh, put it back into Photoshop and then process the images and into the one major image, and this is what I got. That's a beautiful picture. I mean, there you have Comet Leonard with Messier 3 uh, all in the same shot. It, this will never happen again for my, you know, uh, not with this comet anyway, because this comet is a one-shot deal. It is just visiting, passing by our solar system and passing by the Earth in the next couple of days, then Venus by the middle of December, and then around the Sun in early January, and then from there, out in the space, gone forever. So I wanted to do one more thing in the post-processing, and that was to make a movie of the motion of the comet. And to do that, I had Deep Sky Stacker take individual calibrated frames. And then from there, I imported the uh, images into Photoshop 
and highlighted the frames uh, to get the right light levels and so forth and then exported them out to a file and then imported that file into DaVinci Resolve 17 and then from there I made this motion picture and there you can see the comet as it's moving at about nearly 100,000 miles per hour as it's moving toward the sun eventually uh, zipping around the sun at even faster speed than that as right now it's accelerating as it moves closer and closer to the sun. Currently the comet is still in our vicinity in the morning skies and soon to become a evening object uh, and for the southern hemisphere, yeah you guys down there I know you're, you're watching, uh, the, the comet will be making its appearance in the evening sky and you should have some good viewing of that coming up in about a week or so. so Remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders like the Comet Leonard, the uh, globular cluster M3. Of course, you have all the other nebulae, the Orion Nebulae, the Horsehead Nebula, all that in the uh, sky right now. And all this is in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. <laughs>